Iran is about to receive 24 Suhoi Su-35 flanker E fighter jets that Russia initially built for Egypt. According to Western intelligence sources, Iranian pilots already received training in Russia over the spring last year. But this is not enough quantitatively. Experts believe Iran needs at least 60 of these fighter jets to be able to retire some of its old American and Soviet fighters. And this is what we're gonna have a look at in this episode. So welcome to the new episode of Elite Affairs. White House National Security Council spoker son, John Kirby said recently that these fighter planes will significantly strengthen Iran's air force relative to its regional neighbors. As speculated since last year, Iran will likely receive Su-35s initially built for Egypt, about two dozen fighters. These are enough to bolster and start modernizing Iran's old fighter fleet. However, they are not enough to pose any significant challenge to the qualitatively superior air power of its neighbors just across the Persian Gulf. Iran's Air Force needs at least 60 new fighter jets to replace its arsenal's most advanced fighters, the F-14A Tomcat and the MiG-29. It's unclear if Russia plans to build an additional 30 or so Suhoi Su-35s for Iran as part of a second batch of the delivery years from now or deliver fighters from its existing arsenal, which is unlikely given their need in the Ukraine war. There has been some speculation. Iran will want to locally produce the second batch. If so, it could be seeking an arrangement modeled after Russia's prior deal with India which allowed New Delhi to locally manufacture 140 Suhoi Su-30s under license. An increasingly desperate Moscow could offer Tehran such an arrangement to induce a swift supply of more weapons for its war effort in Ukraine. As of recording this video, Iran is apparently reluctant to supply Russia with short-range ballistic missiles, because Tehran doesn't want to get involved in this war more than that. Even if the first batch of the Suhoi Su-35s arrives in Iran this year and there is an agreement for more later, Tehran still cannot compete with its rich Arab neighbors or even Turkey and Israel, but only on the paper. Saudi Arabia has over 80 advanced F-15s. The United Arab Emirates has a similar sized fleet of advanced F-16s. Even if Iran ultimately does acquire 60 Su-35s by the end of this decade, it won't likely be able to pose a substantive offensive aerial threat. And that's not even taking into account Israel's large fleet of fifth generation F-35 stealth fighters or even Turkey's upgraded F-16s. But it doesn't matter for Tehran. Having air superiority based on advanced fighter jets has never been a priority for the government in Iran. They have their own weapons to defend or even invade in case any aggression takes place they have the biggest arsenal of 52 different types of domestic advanced drones, only one of which we have seen in action in Ukraine. They have different types of ballistic and cruise missiles to dictate their will on any possible aggressor. In fact, modern fighter jets are only a cherry on the cake to Iran's army. It only helps them have more options to defend. However, even without them, they have come up with an especial unique structure for defending. Secondly, for them, a modern fighter jet has another more important usage than flying it over enemy skies. They want to copy it. They want to have the technology to make it domestic. This is what they have done in almost all other areas. They have even made copies of the older American F-4 and F-5 jets. And these copies are really operational now. 30 years ago, Iran did not have a single ballistic missile they acquired some old missiles from old friends, worked on them, and now you can see what they have done. The same policy will be in place for modern fighters. By the way, this is what China also did regarding Russian fighters decades ago. And in the end, aside from Turkey and Israel, which are trained to use their advanced fighter jets in the best possible way, Iran's Arab neighbors, I guess, are never experienced enough to use their acquired technology in the best possible way. So for them, having or not having latest American technology does not make too much difference. One thing is having good weapons and being able to get the most out of them is another thing. Thank you my friends for watching and sharing your time with me. 
don't forget to like this video, to subscribe, also to check out other videos on my channel.